So who created this game, Sim Refinery? It was created under the subsidiary of the game company Maxis called Maxis Business Simulations. Maxis Business Simulations came after the success of SimCity, which was released in 1989. By 1991, people were knocking on Maxis doors, wanting them to create simulations for their companies, their businesses, how their factories worked. Maxis kept turning these businesses down left and right as SimCity became more and more popular and larger and a big successful game, pretty much. Although SimCity was based in real city planning, it was made for fun and experimenting more than being a real simulation of building a city. So by 1991, Maxis was looking to hire external help to possibly go down the route of making more real-world simulations for these companies that were knocking on their door. This is when a man by the name of John Hiles entered the fold. He owned a company called Delta Logic. Delta Logic took simulations more seriously based in the real world. Hiles approached Maxis and Maxis took him on the offer and contracted Hiles' company Delta Logic to start working on some games for them. As Delta Logic worked as a contractor for Maxis, Maxis wound up getting $10 million from an investor. So by July 1992, Maxis, with these funds, wound up buying out Delta Logic from John Hiles and they appointed John as the vice president and general manager of the new subsidiary of Maxis, Maxis Business Simulations. So from this buyout and Delta Logic now turning into Maxis Business Simulations, what was the first game assigned for them to make? Well, it was a game that oil company Chevron commissioned Maxis to make to show their employees how an oil refinery worked. Not exactly detailed specifications, but basically the nuts and bolts of how an oil refinery worked as a whole. The game was intended for the Richmond, California location of the Chevron oil refinery, and Chevron paid Maxis $75,000 to make a prototype version of this game, and then later on build on that prototype. So John Hiles and a few others for field work went out to the Chevron oil refinery asking some of the main managers and people that knew how the refinery worked all together from top to bottom, making sure everything was placed right in the game so people would have a good idea of how things ran when playing the game. As Maxis Business Simulations was created, Maxis felt great that they were able to hand these projects off to John Hiles and the others while they could work on more fun and not as detailed simulation games. So Maxis was working on a game called Sim Farm and they gave Maxis Business Simulations the code to work with that to build Sim Refinery on. So if you look at Sim Refinery and Sim Farm, a lot of the details of how the graphics in the game looks are quite similar. So by September 1992, the prototype for Sim Refinery was finished and it was tested by staff at Chevron and Chevron liked it and they noticed that there was an increase in communication between marketing and finance staff and yeah, so they saw that Sim Refinery was actually a good tool to use within the company. So with Sim Refinery being tested, it had an official release date, which was odd for one of these in-company business games, but there was a release date and it was officially released within Chevron on October 26, 1992. But still, Sim Refinery didn't spread like wildfire. It was actually almost a flop. It was dead before it could even fly. The game was never used officially through Chevron and it was still seen only as a prototype. And also on top of that, there was a lot of politics with layoffs in the company. So while layoffs were going on and a game was also being developed, it just wasn't the best timing. So by 1993, Sim Refinery was basically kaput. Chevron, you know, they paid Maxis to make this prototype game, but they were just like, yeah, it's just not the right time. And so it kind of just fell to the wayside. 
But with all of these stories here and there, people were aware that Sim Refinery was made. So these other institutions reached out and said, hey, could I borrow Sim Refinery? I'd like to use it for this, that, and the other. So for example, the UC Davis Department of Chemical Engineering was using Sim Refinery to teach people and all that up until 1997. And also there's stories of other companies wanting to use Sim Refinery as well. But through all of this, Sim Refinery just fell off the map and it just seemed to vanish off the face of the earth. So like I said before, during this time, this span, there were just a few screenshots of the game that just really wasn't much to go off besides knowing that the game actually did exist. From 1992 when it was finished to almost 30 years later, it was never really available to the public at large. The story of this long lost video game, Sim Refinery Being Found, started on a story reported on the technology website ArsTechnica.com. So on May 19th, 2020, Ars Technica reported a story that was first on the website TheObscuratory.com. For those of you unaware of TheObscuratory.com, it's a website that covers unplayed and unknown video games. And one of those games included Sim Refinery. In the story, it was said that it seemed that no one kept a copy of Sim Refinery as it was just a somewhat flop of a training program for an oil refinery. So who was going to want to keep that kind of stuff? Well, funny that that question was asked because someone had an answer. This one reader registered and posted a photo in reply to this article. And this photo was a three and a half inch floppy disk of the game Sim Refinery. You take a look at this photo and it has a very basic white label with black ink saying Sim Refinery with the Maxis logo. And that's about it. Very basic. The reader who posted this photo also said, I notified a retired chemical engineering friend about this article. He worked for Chevron back in the day and look what he found. So it took a bit of work, but later in early June 2020, Sim Refinery was extracted from the floppy disk and uploaded to the website archive.org for anyone to download it and play it. So when you download the game, you get a nice little introduction and it kind of shows you how the game plays and then lets you do whatever you want. So it has a neat little tutorial. The game was still in a prototype state and a lot of the options weren't available. You click on certain buttons and it says it just isn't available or something to that effect. But for the most part, the visuals and all of that, the graphics, it's all there and looks really nice. So on June 5th, with this game being out and available for people to play, it got quite the buzz. Websites like The Verge and Vice were reporting on Sim Refinery being uncovered and available. And when it rains, it pours. Because on June 6th, an instruction booklet titled Sim Refinery Tour Book was also uploaded to the Internet Archive. A few days later, June 9th, the link to the download on archive.org for Sim Refinery was taken down by the request of the original person that uploaded it, the guy who was friends with the man who owned a copy of Sim Refinery. He took it down because he just got worried and he wanted to make sure that no one claimed the rights to it. So people were understandable about that. But as Sim Refinery was downloaded more than 20,000 times, the game was quickly re-uploaded from another user that same day. And to this day, at this present, today, Sim Refinery is available now on archive.org, the internet archive, for anyone to play. So if you want to check out Sim Refinery and play it for yourself, go on and do it. Enjoy. And that is the story and the history of Sim Refinery. Sim Refinery.